again, this is only my second time to be at this church. And the uh, first time that I was here, uh, you all impressed me so much. And you were a blessing to my heart when I came here. And uh, your friendliness, your outgoing attitude, your, uh, the, it, was, it, it was unusual in uh, the churches that I went to. And I want to thank you for that because it impressed me so much that I when I was coming back to Mississippi, I talked to Um, we, uh, let's uh, maybe see it. The, um, I want to encourage you here today to use your natural abilities that God has given you as much as you can for the kingdom of God. Now, the gifts that God gives you naturally are, of course, also given by God, right. just like the spiritual gifts are given by God. God gives us God who is our creator and is also our redeemer. Okay? The God who created us, made us, is the same God who saved us, right? Right. Okay. So we're one of those people that we know that the great creator became our savior. Now, God, here's an illustration. God gives us wood and God also gives us brains and keep human beings keep thinking of new uses for wood. So God gave the wood, gave us the trees, okay, and then we keep finding new uses for, in fact, to say the trees are just wood, that right there would be a limitation of it because the trees provide a lot of other things. The trees provide medication, the trees provide a, a medicines that, you know, that we use, so we keep finding new, 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 uh, species of trees and we keep using, finding new uses of, of, of say, in, say in the Brazilian form, rainforest, uh, we find new new uh, things. Uh, sometimes it's uh, medications that are made by the from the animals that are living in the trees. And so we, the human mind that God has given us keeps using its intelligence to find new uses from the things in the creation that God has given us. Okay? So that is one example of using the natural gifts that God has given us and then the, the benefiting the human race from that, whether whether it is the medications or the wooden furniture or whatever it was that was made from those trees. That's just one example. Okay? Now, every ability that God gives you, whether it is artistic, musical, mechanical, uh, uh, whether it is with words or whether it is with pictures uh, whether, or whether it is with the machines and how they, these work. Every ability, every form of intelligence that God gives human beings, this is part of the creation that God has supplied and it is to be used for God's glory. Okay, It can be used for that God's glory. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This is talking about the physical creation, the natural world that God has made. Then, in chapter 5 of Revelation, they sang a new song. New song means different from the song they sang in chapter 4. And the new song is, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing, depending on which translation you're using. But then that these seven things are mentioned that God, that the Lamb is worthy to receive. Why? Because he has bought people with his blood, purchased people with his blood from every kindred and tribe and nation, that means ethnicity. Every group of people, but however you divide them by language or by ethnicity, by tribe or whatever they, uh, however you categorize all these groups of people, God has made them. And first of all, chapter four, God has made them, and then chapter five, God has purchased them by His salvation. Right. So in both chapter four and chapter five, God is being praised first for creation and second for redemption. Okay. You are first of all a physical being that God has made 
and that belongs to God. And second, you are a spiritual being that God has redeemed and filled with the Spirit. And that belongs to God. Okay? So all, everything, if the earth is the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the earth, everything in it belongs to God. And everything that is in you belongs to God. Whether it is God, whether it's a natural gift that God has given you or a spiritual gift that God has given you. Now, um, we can when we do our Bible studies, when we do our our, our development of our whole of our 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 life and our knowledge of the Word of God as a human being, as a Christian. When we develop our, 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 ourselves spiritually, there are two things that we need to be concerned about. One is, of course, that we want to learn the Bible. We want to learn stuff that's in the Bible. We want to learn facts. We want to learn these things. But we also want to be able to think deeply and to feel deeply what is in all that information that we know, okay? So it's like, a, it's like a, using the wood illustration again. There is a, we know about these trees. We know that there is an oak tree. We know that there's a pine tree. We know that there's a maple tree. But now, what are we gonna do about that? What are we gonna do with that knowledge, okay? So this is that next step of what you're going to do with the abilities that God has given you. I mean, you find out that you can do a certain thing well. You find out that you have a knack for it. But whether, no, what word we want to use. Oh, he's a genius. Oh, he's talented. Oh, he's a, he has, he has a, he's gifted. Or oh, he's got an ability in this or that. And sometimes, some of these things we prize because we, we lift them up on the pedestal. For example, in Pentecost, we value musical ability very highly. And so when somebody has musical ability, they, that tends to get pushed to the forefront because we value it very highly and it gets, it gets exposure. We, we find out about it because we prize it. Okay. But guess what? There are lots of other abilities also that are extremely valuable to your family and to, to the work of God. And so uh, think of all the Sunday school teachers who, who have that ability to work with children. Okay. Think of all the Think of all the people. Think of everything that you cannot do or don't know how. I just want to say you can't do it, but you don't know how yet how to do it yet. Right. And so you get somebody else to do it right. because they're good at it. Okay, there you have it. You have an ability that somebody has, and they use it, and you go to them for that, and you value that, and you very frequently you're willing to pay them. Okay, if you can't fix your car, you go to an automobile mechanic and ask him to fix. Car because he's talented in mechanical things, maybe, and you aren't. So that would be my situation. See, I have a car and it has an engine I'm told in it. Okay, and, <laughs> and I turn this, I turn this ignition, and boom, I hear the sound. Okay, and then I move the gear shift because I'm, I'm told that if I move the gear shift, that the car will be able to go forward. Okay, so how all of this works. That I do not understand. I just know that there are certain things. I know how to drive the vehicle, but I know how to fix the vehicle. So, so, so then when I need somebody to fix it, I go and find an automobile mechanic. So there you have a mechanical ability that, that I do not have, but somebody else has. And I value it very highly. I value that ability highly enough to pay that person to do it for me. Okay. So, now, the people who are in your church, the children, the youth, and some, some people who, who don't know yet what their abilities are, or maybe that's you, but you know, there are there are certain things that, that maybe we haven't, we haven't thought about how valuable they are, and we have thought that, it, oh, everybody knows how to do that. No, they don't, okay? Now, for example, uh, let's use something that we sometimes call a soft skill, people skill. Working with people. Oh, everybody knows how to do that. No, they don't. No, not everybody knows how to do that. Okay? So that is a very, very valuable skill. And uh, young people, children, and so on. You know, when, when, you do, when you grow and you start developing, you know, there are certain things that they that certain building, certain skills that become obsolescent because we find ways to get computers to do them. But people skills 
It's something that's just part of leadership and to have it and and that is something that probably we're not going to be able to get the viewers to do instead. Okay. So I'm trying to say that some of the things we may not have thought were as skills or as abilities, but they are. And we need to prize these things as well. Some people are just have a natural ability of something, and when we find out that they have it, we need to we need to number one, encourage them to develop it and use it. And secondly, we also need to find a way to involve them in the kingdom of God so that they can use the abilities that God has given them for God's glory. Okay? And so, uh, for, uh, so, so there is a... Uh, I, I have this great urge to... Uh, I don't want to see our, our, anyone... I, I know I can mention young people because they haven't, they're, they're starting out in life, but it's not just young people. I don't want to see anybody just drift and not use the great talents that God has given them. Okay? Amen. Now, some people say, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are, and because, okay, let's use an example of spiritual gifts. When you were born of the Spirit, the Bible says God has given spiritual gifts, okay, as He decided to give them, okay? So, as He thought best, God gave spiritual gifts. So, that means, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you have spiritual gifts. Now, spiritual gifts also come at other times. Uh, Paul tells Timothy, stir up the gift that was given to you when the elders laid their hands on you. So there was another time that spiritual gifts were given, not just when somebody got spiritual birth, but also later on in the life. So these spiritual gifts come at different times. In the same way, when you were born physically, you have natural gifts. Now, we, we already know that when we discover that somebody has a, a talent for, for this or that, we say, oh, if we, if we, if we know that a, a small child has a great musical ability, parents will often say, oh, we better get them piano lessons, we better do something, you know, because we found out our kid has this ability. Well, the same thing applies to not just musical or artistic talent, but to anything else, you know. When we discover that the person is interested in something. I'm sure every parent here, you want your kids' abilities to be to be used to their fullest. So as soon as you find out that the child has an ability in that way, then you want to you want to encourage that and develop that. And so I'm saying we have a heavenly Father who has given us abilities, and He also wants the, our abilities to be used to to the fullest extent. He certainly wants that even more because His love is so great for us. He wants us to use our abilities. For, him, for the kingdom of God and to, the, to help other people even more than we want that and even more than we are aware sometimes of this. So what are we going to do about this? One of the things we're going to do is we're going to try to do different things. We're going to explore and get involved in different things and that way we often find out what something that interests us and that we're good at. And somebody says, hey, you did that very well. You know, whenever I find somebody in a field of work that they do, I often I ask them, how did you choose this? Why did you choose this particular thing? There was a, a, a surgeon that I met who was a plastic surgeon. And so I asked her, I said, no. I said, you were in medical school and you were trying to decide, you know, what speciality, specialization you were going to get involved in. How, why did you choose this one? rather than something else. And I told her, no matter what specialization you had, I would ask you the same question. <coughs> How did you choose? Because there's so many. And so she said, she said, uh, I was in medical school and we were given the job of, of surgery, you know, uh, stitching up a wound. And when I did this, and somebody saw the work that I did, and they said, you did a very, very good job at that. You, you should consider plastic surgery because of the skin, you know. So she thought about that, and she had not thought about plastic surgery before, but because she did this particular thing very well, and she was encouraged, okay, therefore she went into that field, saying, oh, I did not know I was particularly good at this, but now that I have found this out and been encouraged to, to move forward in this, I decided to do it. And there, there, there she had a career as a plastic surgeon. See, the people that we see, and we see them do something well, 
when we see that they do something well. We need to encourage that and say, you did a good job at that. Okay. This applies in your family, this applies in the church, this applies in, in, in your jobs and your career, you know, with, with the abilities that God has given us are sometimes we're unaware of that. But we could use that for God's kingdom if we knew about it. Okay? And sometimes if somebody will just notice and say it, then we that can be the thing that, that, that jump starts a whole a whole life that's tremendously productive. And that they, they they may have a tremendous career that is well that's well <coughs> paid for their job and their family. They may have a tremendous a tremendous thing that they do in the church that blesses your congregation. They may have a, a tremendous thing that helps their company. They may so you see it, it's this multiplied effect that keeps rolling over into more and more lives. So I'm encouraging you as children of God, you know, that and to in your own life and in the lives of other people in the church to. Uh, to encourage people's excellence and to encourage people's skill, whether that is in spiritual things that they do or in the natural gifts that God gives them. Now, uh, some people have memorized a lot of the Bible. They have also uh, know how to how to pray eloquently or things like this. But sometimes they they learn stuff about the Bible. They learn processes, they learn these external things, and these things don't become, they don't become part of them, okay? It's just a bunch of, a bunch of information that gets, that gets learned. And then what I'm trying to encourage here is that instead of, of just absorbing a bunch of information, that this becomes part of our heart and our soul so that it affects our behavior and so that we're not just people who know about the Bible, but that we're people who are becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, and that we are people who are the, where all of these things we are learning are becoming part of our integrity, part of our character, and, uh, and we, we personally are changing, we are developing, we are growing. And, uh, and so this, this helps, this, the Word of God is here for us to learn, but it's also, re remember what the, what the God said to Moses, uh, God said to Joshua after Moses died, and Joshua was being put in charge. God said to, to Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night, so that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. So it wasn't just something to learn about God. It wasn't just the information to accumulate, but it was it was something that he was to start doing, you know, and to start living it. And uh, when we say living it, um, it's it's uh, of course it includes, and of course it includes our Bible reading. Of course it includes our prayer. Of course it includes our church attendance. Uh, but it, it also includes our absorption of this into our daily life, the things that we do. Uh, there was a guy whose name was Frank Laubach, L-A-U-B-A-C-H, and he, you, some of you may have heard of this uh, Laubach Literacy uh, courses that where you teach people how to read, okay? Uh, there's a whole system of that if you have immigrants come into your community and, and they know how to read and write English, then there's a whole thing how to teach, teach them English. First of all, it was to teach literacy, and then secondly, it was used to teach English to people who, uh, who are immigrants and come into a new community. And so this, the Frank Laubach system for teaching English is very good. But Frank Laubach himself, he also, he was devoted deeply to, to Jesus Christ. And he said, I want to go through every day thinking and living in Jesus Christ, like Jesus is this companion that I'm with. Because he is. I mean, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus Christ's spirit is in you and around us, you know. So we um, so whether we sense it and realize it or not, Jesus Christ is with us and, and in us, okay, on a day by day basis. And so Frank Lava was just trying to live that and have that become part of him and part of his consciousness on a day by day basis. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do my best here to uh, to encourage you 
myself, everyone, that this that this fulfillment of everything that God's created us to be, that this presence of God's life in us uh, becomes something that changes, transforms us as, as individuals, as people, so that we begin to live this. And this, another way to help you with this is, to, and, and me, is, is a consultation with people who, have, who are further ahead of us in their spiritual life than we are, okay? And uh, to use a natural illustration of this, I was trying to, I was interviewing my grandpa about his life for, uh, to be able to write the first the volume of his biography. And he was talking about his childhood. And he, uh, I suddenly realized that when he talked about his early childhood, that he could remember the end of World War I. He was born in 1909. In 1918, there was the armistice, so Grandpa was nine years old when the armistice ending World War I took place. And he was living out on the farm in Oregon, but they heard all of the, the celebrations, fireworks, and everything. This nine-year-old boy, who now is my Grandpa, <laughs> and could remember the end of World War I. He would talk about other memories he had. He talked about, you know, the, about the car that, that they got, that, that his family got, that had before there were pneumatic tires, there were solid rubber tires. So uh, he was talking about driving on solid rubber tires. He talked about uh, the first gun that he and his older brother, they cleared the brush and did some chores and everything, they were able to buy a gun to do bird shooting with. And then he, he was able to talk about, he, was, he had a perspective, you see, that I did not have. I was, in, uh, I was a kid or a young person, and he 